Hey everybody, thank you for joining us today. I am super excited about the show we have coming up. You know, one of the things that we see happening in our country is when we turn on our te television, uh, we see all the filth that comes out of Hollywood. I mean, let's just be honest, there are things that, that uh, 30 years ago, man, it would have made people blush and now it's become a common thing. And so we look at all that's happening and, and we, we think about all that's being put on there. We have to wonder, is that really good for us as believers? Is that really good for us uh, in our homes, our families to be watching all this stuff? And, and where do we draw the line? And if, if that content is bad, where do we find good content? And who's trying to put good content out? And today we're going to talk uh, to uh, a special guest and uh, we actually have a couple people going to join us today, but we're going to talk to somebody who was born in Russia. She was an atheist, came to America and actually ended up on a reality show. And from that reality show, she ends up meeting Jesus. And now she has a mission to go and change Hollywood and put out movies that not only are good for families to watch, but really bring the message of Christ out. So I want you to stick around and, and join us as we have a special show today talking about Hollywood and how we can take it back. We are so excited to have a, a special guest with us. I mean, there is so much to talk about with our guest today. She is literally uh, not only been around the world from where she came to here, but has a unique experience. And I think the thing that I'm most excited about is to hear her story about how she came to be a believer in Jesus and just what has happened. And not only uh, not only are we going to get to hear from her, but we've also got another special guest that you're going to hear from today. So I'm really excited. Anna Kate, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Pastor Ben. The only special guest here is Jesus. Hallelujah. So um, it's pretty amazing. You know, I never thought I would talk about Jesus because I was an atheist my whole, oh, pretty much my entire life. And like you said, from Russia. So I'm so grateful to know the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and, you know, be acquainted with uh, brothers and sisters around the world and pastors. Amen. Oh, that's awesome. Well, we just got to start, uh, you know, you're from Russia. That uh, was the first place I ever went to outside of America. Uh, our family had been praying for years to be able to go to Russia and minister. My dad went in early of 92. And then in October of 92, he went a second time. And so uh, I guess because I was the oldest son, I got to go with him. And man, what an experience that was. I remember we flew to St. Petersburg and we got there and we went into to schools. And, and uh, I'll never forget, I was a 12 year old boy and they uh, there was probably maybe 50 people in our group that was in this school. And they said that they're going to perform a song for all of you guests. Now, I was the only teenage boy there. I wasn't quite a teenager. I was almost 13, but I was the only young man there. And the, the Russian girls sang this song, American Boy, American Joy. I'll never forget that. I'm not saying they were singing it to me, but, you know, it kind of felt like they did. But it was an amazing experience. And then we would go and we'd minister. We went to these former underground churches. We would take Bibles uh, from our hotel, we just walk out on the street and just yell free Bible and people would flock up to get a Bible. And I'll never forget. Probably the most unique experience was talking to a lady through an interpreter. She was 94 years of age. She said, I saw the Bible for the first time when I was seven. She said, since that day, I've been praying every day that I could get my own copy of the word of God. She said, but I'll be honest. I was giving up hope that day would ever come. And I'll never forget. She grabbed that Bible she kissed it. And then in broken English, she said these words. She said, God bless America. Mm. And what an impact that had on my life to see uh, this lady that was so hungry for the Bible. And of course, being a 12 year old kid, we had Bibles everywhere in our house. I, I didn't know what that was like. And so tell me a little bit. I don't know how much experience. I don't know when you came here. So when did you leave Russia? What do you remember about Russia? But what was that culture like coming from there to America? Yeah, you know, in Russia, we love Americans, right? We love freedom. And obviously during communism that hit the country in the you know 1920s and really 1917, there was such an oppression and such a persecution that the Russian people went to went through. Obviously communism, it's a religion of secularism, right? Religion of atheism. So, you know, by God's grace, um, there were people such as yourself and many other people around the world who came to deliver the good news, right? The Bible, because Russia is a very Christian nation. There's also a lot of Jewish people that live there. And when communism broke out, it was persecution on the church. They were, you know, having pastors denounce Christ or they get killed. They had many churches were toppled over. You had many Jewish people 
experience anti-Semitism. I mean, it's totally from the pits of hell. We know that communism, socialism. So it's 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 beautiful to see and hear these stories of people coming to Russia because you're right. I mean, even in China, I've, I have friends who are pastors that go to China and they minister in China and they, they don't have a Bible. You're not even allowed to own a Bible. It's against the law. So they have the Bible written on their heart. That's why the Bible said that, you know, put the put the laws and the commandments on your heart, no matter what, it, no matter if they throw you in jail, you know the word. Amen. So and here in America, we have 12 different versions of, of the Bibles. You know, I have three different versions of this version. I have three different colors of this. So we're so blessed in this country. God really did bless America. God blessed Israel as well. You know, Israel, uh, God chose Israel, but America chose God. This is a blessed nation. And I do believe it's not over the battle in this country and also in Russia and even in China. There's a huge underground church, like you're saying, in China, all over the world. So we're praying for our brothers and sisters there. They, they really know how to seek the Lord and they don't even have the word, but they seek I, him with all of their hearts, mind. Absolutely. And, and I think so often we fail to see what we have until it's gone. And that's, that's the reason I think when you go to China, when you like Russia in the early nineties, uh, when you go to these places that the, the gospel has been oppressed where um, uh, religion, if you will, uh, has been looked down upon. I'm talking about true faith in Christ has been looked down upon People are so hungry for that. And then here in a place like America, we just take it for granted. I mean, we go to church on Sunday. We don't fear that somebody showing up and, and uh, you know, arresting us for having church. We don't fear these things. And so what's been sad is, is that we've taken for granted just what we've been given. And I'm reminded scripture tells us to whom much is given, much is required. And so, you know, I think America has a great responsibility because we've been blessed so much to take what God's given us and to use that for his honor and his glory. And that's an area I think that we are uh, right now as, as a whole, as a country we're failing in, uh, you know, we're fighting against God. We don't want him in our schools. We don't want him in our places of government. We don't want him in any of these places. We've kicked God out. Then when tragedy happens, we're like, well, where's God? Well, we asked him to leave. And, you know, I think coming from a place like you did, maybe you see it even more than people who've been born here, lived here all their life. Uh, just what we have and probably the under, the importance of, of what we need to do to take this freedom and use it for God's honor and glory. Yeah, no, I think there are a lot of immigrants who really recognize the constant, it's a, it's the same script of the devil. It's the same one, you know, oppress the people, take over tyrannical leadership, socialism that they're pushing. I mean, this is, it's always the same script. So immigrants, you know, Cubans, Russians, um, you know, people from Latin America, uh, we understand that system. And and obviously what it comes down to is a spiritual battle, right? It's not just a battle in the natural. It's really a, a, a spirit, a, a battle in the spiritual realm. It's the same devil, same tricks, same lies, same deception and same manipul manipulation. And so, you know, we can only do it with God. Hallelujah. So that's why we repent on behalf of this nation every day, right? This is just like Moses stood in the gap for with all the, um, with all the Israelites, you know, who were complaining and murmuring and saw the glory of God, saw the move of God. And they were still murmuring, you know, God opened up the Red Sea and they were still murmuring, complaining. And even though he, he went up there for, you know, 40 days and got, had the commandments written, they came down, they, were, they have an idol already. They, they couldn't wait for God. They couldn't wait on God. They weren't patient enough. They're still complaining. You know, God opened up the earth and swallowed them up. So we're living in those times, really, where we're going to see such manifestations of the Holy Spirit in such biblical ways and biblical terms that people are just going to be in such awe and shock. That's actually something my pastor always talks about. And actually, I'd love to introduce her, Pastor Root. She's sitting right next to me. Uh, we're in California in her studio right now. I mean, she teaches about this all the time. Why don't you jump in and talk about, you know, America, Russia, and the, you know, the What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, for me, the American dreams. Uh, I was a medical doctor in the Philippines, so everybody wants money and American dreams. You know, I just want. Anyway, by by God's grace, I got Jesus' dream. I got saved in this country. I love it. For the last thirty-one years, and so for me to be so much in the natural, because I started for ten years as a medical doctor to believe for the spiritual component, I have to die. I have to turn off this brain that 12 years. And that's why I tell people he can heal. I mean, I heard the audible voice of God when he told me, I'm going to give you a new heart. So I told everyone, bring me home, darling. Bring me home. And then of course people say, you're crazy. You're a medical person and you're going home. You're having a heart attack. I said, yeah, God said, I'm going to have a new heart without surgery. So I believe it's a walk by faith. And just like you said, it's really attacking our faith in Christ. Mm. So if he can't 
take that out of all of us, you know, especially the body of Christ, especially pastors and leaders, hopelessness comes in, no. perversion, immorality, it follows. Debauchery. I was, yeah, debauchery is like, wow, you know? So anyway, here we are, Rally for Righteousness. <laughs> well, I love it. Are you searching for financial wisdom rooted in timeless principles? Then look no further. Kirk Elliott Financial Wealth Advisor Firm is the best blend of biblical insights with expert financial guidance to navigate the stormy waters of an economic uncertainty. Kirk Elliott, renowned for his financial acumen, is your trusted guide through these turbulent times. With years of experience and a passion for biblical principles, Kirk brings clarity and purpose to every financial decision. Whether you're facing market fluctuation or seeking to align your wealth with your values, Kirk Elliott has the answers you need. No matter your background or experience, Kirk's approach is both approachable and effective. He'll help you understand how to protect your assets and make wise investments while staying true to your beliefs. When you go with Kirk Elliott, you can be confident that your finances are in capable hands. Just mention my name, Pastor Ben Graham, and they'll take care of you at his firm. Don't leave your financial future to chance. Tune in to the Kirk Elliott Financial Wealth Advisory Firm podcast and equip yourself with the tools to make informed decisions in today's unpredictable world. Embrace biblical finances and embark on a journey towards prosperity and financial peace of mind. Subscribe now to Real Talk with Pastor Ben Graham podcast and get ready to thrive amidst an economic uncertainty. Remember, when you go with Kirk Elliott, you're choosing financial wisdom rooted in biblical principles. Take the first step towards a brighter financial future today. And, you know, I've, I've been blessed to, to be in the Philippines uh, on multiple occasions. And another place that, um, one, they, uh, at least in the parts I was at, they love Americans. But, you know, people who uh, understand what it's like to not have a lot of resources, not to have a lot of money. And yet the people there that have met Christ are some of the most devoted Christians who just, you know, they love Christ. And 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 it's a reminder when I'm around them of how blessed we truly are. And, you know, we're in this battle. Last night, I went and spoke at our school board uh, here in Tennessee. We're in a very conservative county. And yet in our public school, in the books, uh, they're filled with pornography. They're filled with, there's images of an older man raping a girl. And they're trying to make this a normal of a guy who puts a gun in, in a girl's mouth and they're talking about bondage and they're talking about all this filth. I mean, it's 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 beyond pornographic and we're putting it in the school books. And so I went to our school board and said enough is enough. And, and you know, we as God's people have to take a stand. We have to we have to be a voice. And, and so many pastors uh, have been silenced by. The majority. So many pastors have been silenced by a paycheck. So many pastors have been silenced because uh, it's not popular. And yet, you and I understand that we have a responsibility. We're to speak out as the prophets in the scriptures stood up and spoke out and they demanded, they commanded the king, listen, God is on the throne and he's telling you that you need to pay attention to what he's saying. And oftentimes, these kings did not listen to the prophets of God. And uh, we have the responsibility to speak truth and and to say, thus saith the Lord. Here's what scripture says. And so I thank you both for doing that. Um, I, I want to talk a little bit about this because I, I think if I understand correctly, uh, Anna, I know you got involved in uh, making a reality show. You're involved in that. I'm involved uh, in movies. I, I get to act in films and I'm actually doing one this fall uh, where my character, who's the lead of this movie, uh, is a guy named John, but it's really a spiritual uh, warfare. And you mentioned that a while ago. We're in a spiritual warfare, and it's a movie that shows um, how the enemy works to um, to uh, handcuff people to to keep them from being free. Talk about your experience about being in there and and what that was like. And I'm sure because I'm assuming knowing the show, it's a little more of a sect that comes from a secular world. What was that like? And and maybe did you see a lot of oppression there? You know, what did you go through in that? Yeah, you know, I was an atheist when I did that show. In fact, after the show, I had my Jesus moment, my Damascus moment. Amen. And actually, we're all called to Hollywood here. Hallelujah. And, you know, arts, media, entertainment. But, you know, on Survivor, when I... Uh, I should say, even after I filmed it, first of all, the, the, the filming was, was awesome. It was super fun. It was, it's, it is real reality show. It was, it wasn't scripted. You know, we were really starving out there. It was quite an experience. Actually, it was the first time I heard God's voice. 
I'm sure, you know, he's spoken to me before and I completely didn't understand it was him, but I remember it was the last day I was on the show and I was looking at this fire. It was this big, beautiful bond fire and looking at the fire, I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to be safe today. He's going to save me because my friend told me he was going to save me with his, you know, a uh, secret idol. And, um, and I, looking at that fire fasting for how many weeks were out there. And I heard the Lord say, I don't know, it's him. He said, you're going home tonight. I heard it audibly loud and clear. And, you know, from then on my life changed. And so when I, after the, after I got back home, you know, had my Damascus moment, was right there, really, really close. Finally, you know, gave my life to Jesus. And then going and being invited to these parties, these parties in Hollywood, these parties all over where I was in New York, New Jersey, and all these survivor parties, these, you know, reality show meetups and, you know, all these kind of parties. And um, I used to party when I was a kid, you know, went to clubs, did all that. And it was just something about being right on the brink of getting saved where you're really starting to discern the good and the evil. I didn't want to be there. In fact, I'm looking around, everyone is drinking, everyone is hooking up and everyone is, most of them are married and they're cheating on their wives and husbands. And I remember thinking, I am out of here. I left. I was invited many times after that. Some of them I went to, some of them I did not. And I just thought, my goodness, it's, I didn't know Sodom and Gomorrah, but I was like, this is like Sodom and Gomorrah when I realized later, you know? And so there, but people, you know, they're on TV, you think people, you have a lot of fans and everyone wants your autograph and picture, but inside they're, they're dead. They're miserable. I know a lot of them who are super depressed even still. And, you know, some of them have reached out. Some of them I was able to lead to the Lord, but, um, there's a lot of them that are still stuck in that. And, you know, the, the, the glitz and the glamor of life, but inside they're broken, depressed and, and suicidal. And I've been there, you know, I've been there. So it's only by God's grace, I was pulled out of it. So I'm aware what we're, you know, being called back into Hollywood now with Jesus, making movies, making films, making shows, um, you know, my pastor was also called to that. That's why I'm part of this family team. And so it's, it, I had a taste of it. I saw what it's like, you know, I want nothing to do with the, the worldly part of it, but it's the souls in there that my spirit is crying out for these beautiful souls who have no idea. They're so blinded and so trapped in the world and the devil's, you know, web of lies and, and, and worldly lusts. And so, you know, people are desperate, they're hungry, but they don't know the solution really is Jesus because it's not shown on TV. It's not shown in the movies. In fact, you're not allowed to say the name of Jesus. You're not mm. allowed. You know, Mel Gibson was watching an interview with him recently where he was talking about the passion of the Christ. And he was talking about Jim Caviezel and he's, he basically told Jim, he said, are you, are you sure you want to take this role as Jesus Christ in the passion movie? You, you are aware you're probably never going to be able to film and act in this industry again. And Jim said, I'm aware. And he took the part. So it's that leap of faith, you know, that walk in boldness and knowing, listen, we're serving God. The enemy can't, he can try to cancel us all he wants, but you can't cancel the King of glory. Amen. Someone else will rise up. So, you know, we're coming in really as a family team. Pastor, I want to love you to talk about the, the arts, media, entertainment. Yes. When I was younger, I was also involved in the Philippines. They want me, they're asking my father, he, she needs to go with us in, you know, arts, name movies, it. movies. And my father said, no, she's going to be a doctor. And I thank God for that because I was so much in the world. <laughs> I should have, maybe I'm dead already if I, my dad allowed me to be there. But now God said, that's the biggest pulpit. Hmm. Arts, entertainment, and media is the biggest pulpit. Of course, the first time he told me that, I said, what about my past, Lord? And God said, what's your past? <laughs> <laughs> I All said, under the blood. <laughs> everything's under the blood. I said, yes. If they have a problem, tell them, talk to, to my father. Yeah. So anyway, it, it's been a ride for the last 31 years. And it's never been easy, but it's so much fun. It's so glorious. It's amazing yeah. when the word of God manifests, you know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, you know, so I've had the privilege. I've, I've been in about 14, 15 movies, but I've been on three major Hollywood sets. Came in just as an actor. Um, and I really did it. I've been a, I've been a senior pastor for 23 years. I've been in full-time ministry since I was 19. So, you know, uh, it wasn't like, you know, I could say it was at a time when I wasn't serving the Lord. This was as a senior pastor. Um, uh, I did these movies. I just wanted to see how Hollywood did them. Mm -hmm. And the scene, the movie, particular movies I was in, you know, were movies that I felt comfortable. I didn't have to do anything that I didn't feel comfortable with, but my doctor's degree is in clinical counseling. And when I would get on set, I, they would ask me, what do you do? And I'm like, I'm a pastor, really. Like, you know, and then I would be like, yeah, I'm a senior pastor. It's what I do full time. And then every time it turned into a counseling session, you know, uh, all, all these actors, uh, these cast members, these crew members, uh, all were dealing with problems like you talked about, because 
people think that fame and fortune is going to bring satisfaction and you'll never find true joy and satisfaction in money because there's not enough money to bring happiness. There's not enough fame to bring happiness. Those things are all, uh, they're, they're false. They're deceivers. You can't find true joy in that. And I have seen this happen time and time again. And, and speaking of Jim Caviezel, I uh, was speaking at an event a couple of years ago and I walked backstage. He was there. We started talking and he talked about that very thing. He, his agent left him. His manager left him. All these people were leaving him because of the stand that he was taken. But, you know, we we had this conversation. It, it's more important for us to please God than man. Amen. And when you and I get to a place where where we love him more than anything else, that's all that matters. And then we can be bold in our faith and we can speak the truth. And, hey, if Hollywood never asked me to do a film again, that's okay. I'm not going to deny Jesus. I'm not going to stop talking about him. But I do know this. When I stand up and I proclaim my faith in Jesus Christ, God always blesses that. And I found that being faithful to him is way more important and way more satisfying than being faithful to this world or being faithful to my flesh. And I appreciate what both of you are doing. So tell me a little bit more about how you're trying to infiltrate Hollywood and what you're trying to do in sharing your faith there with these folks that are that are just broken, who 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 think that Hollywood is going to bring them happiness and it hasn't. Yeah. I know you're probably like me. You're looking for something to watch. You flip through the channels, you're going through, what am I going to watch? I mean, I've already seen this. This doesn't sound interesting at all. And if your wife's not in the room, you're certainly not going to watch Hallmark without her. Come on. We barely like watching it with her in the room. What am I going to watch? Well, let me tell you about our latest film, Pardoned by Grace. Now, I have to give a disclaimer. When you turn it on, you're going to see this guy who's playing a cop in a mustache. And man, it looks awful. But that guy is me, so I can say that. But you're going to find a great movie. Pardoned by Grace is the latest Graham Family Films movie. You can watch it on Pure Flix. And for the last month, it has been one of the top movies on their platform. I encourage you to go to Pure Flix, watch Pardoned by Grace, the true story of Scott Heibarger, who was arrested 35 times. It's an inspiring story. You'll absolutely love it. I hope you'll go and watch it. And I think you're going to enjoy it. They bailed him out with two. Hi, Murder, let's go. I used to be addict, alcoholic, felon. I know. So what? Mr. Heiberger, you're back again. He's racking up the frequent flyer miles. Every one of us are behind these bars because we fell into some kind of quicksand. Maybe not the real kind, but the spiritual kind. So you choose to exercise sin. It gets bigger and bigger until it consumes you. So you exercise your faith. Guess what? It gets stronger. I got something that'll warm you up like a warm blanket. This is the word. This is the bread of life. Hey, what's up? I'm Dave. I tell you, I sure wish some more guys in the joint could understand what Jesus did so that they too could be saved, you know? Like a prison ministry. We can minister to the prisoners? I sure hope so. God's got a plan, Scott. No rule of man can deny that purpose. I'm sorry, we have a problem. It's out of Florida. Some old trouble I had from years ago. Spent my whole life fighting to stay out of prison, and now they won't let me back in. I don't know what's going to happen. You do realize that Jonah felt the same, yes? He didn't want to go to Nineveh. So God sent a giant whale to swallow him up and drag him there. I, sir, am your giant whale. Pardon by grace. Hi, Burger. You're up. I mean, for me, I'll share really short. Um, for me, you know, the Lord showed me dreams, dreams of scripts. He showed me dreams of even auditioning and acting. And I thought, Lord, what? And, you know, and, and, and I, you know, used to be kind of religious about it. How can Christians be in Christian, you know, films and do acting? And the Lord said, no, we're going to take back Hollywood. And my pastor always says, holy word. Um, I mean, she's been praying for Hollywood for over what, 30 years. She's been traveling. She lives close to LA. She's always there ministering. In fact, she went to some events and, you know, they had a sign. What is it? Spiritual reading? Yes. Instead of saying Jesus, because, you know, they would run away from the Jesus sign. So spiritual reading. So 
Yeah, they said, oh, most of them, of course, all of them said, wow, well, you're a psychic? I said, no, it's a gift from God. So I love the gifts of the spirit because they're like, how do you know me? Because there's, there's a God that loves you. So, of course, uh, I, I, just, like, I tell everyone, we're not going to be religious. We have to love this soul because at first, we're fasting and praying for them, for all of you. In fact, you're included, Pastor, because I didn't even know that you do that. But we pray for everyone that's working there, you know, whether they're a uh, believer or not. For the last since, you know, yeah, well since 2020 you know 20, uh, 2001 but 21 years or something or more but god already put that in our hearts that it's really the biggest pulpit we how can we reach the billions of souls mm. you know i mean i, I love one-on-one -on -one. i do discipleship one-on-one -on -one, like huh, 21 days for four times you know but god said it's billions of souls going to hell mm. i said we have to capture this and so with the unplanned movie we got you know involved and i was invited for that and uh, the the producer director of the unplanned movie and the uh, God's not there. They look at me like they said, "Oh, there's something about you," and I said, it's "Jesus, uh, sir." I said, "Yeah, okay, go with us in the premiere." So they made me the um, ambassador uh, of the Philippines. Philippines in unplanned without knowing I was an unplanned baby. Yeah, so her mother <laughs> wanted to board her. <laughs> Tried to kill her. Wow. So I, the last, <laughs> yeah, that's why I said 61 years of uh, such a blessing from the Lord. You know, it's like, and I. I it's like reversal of age, reversal of all this. I don't have, I don't take medicine anymore. So I've seen the word of God manifested in my life. Mm. And that's why the Lord said so many, you know, it's so hard to talk to these people that are so super confused. They want to see something tangibly. Mm -hmm. Like First Corinthians 11, 1, he said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. And when I, we were traveling, you know, in, in Africa, different this country, I said, who are you? Who among you? There's like 50 or two, you know, there's like so many pastors there. He said, can humbly and boldly say, imitate me, just say, also imitate Christ. No one raised their hand. And I said, okay, that's the one thing. That's why the world is dying because they, they want an example. I mean, no matter how intelligent a baby is, if you tell them, walk in the spirit, so you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And like, the first time I heard that, should I die to see heaven or what? <laughs> you know, as a baby, believers, I think, take things literally. <laughs> I don't know what dying to flesh means. I don't know what the, the joy of the Lord in the midst of chaos, in the midst of persecution. You know, it's like, no way, because I was so queen, queen, uh, queen drama queen. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you know what, when you talk about images, right, you talk about, you know, the devil understands the power of video and yeah. images and pictures. You know, God gives us dreams. God gives us visions. And a lot of time, you know, it's a famous quote, you know, a picture can say a thousand words. It's implanted on our soul. It's implanted on our brain and on our spirit, man. So the devil understands that. That's why he has demonic movies, demonic uh, music, demonic shows, demonic pornographic images everywhere you look. You can't even go anywhere on any social media without seeing things pop up. People that you don't even follow are popping up, you know, and the Bible says, Jesus said, watch your ear gates and your eye gates. Be careful because they get implanted. So that's just the, the way that the, the, the enemy has been able to take over Hollywood, to take over movies, take over films and, and, and TV shows and music. And so it's time to take it back, right? Jesus said, occupy till I come back, occupy till I return. So it's our job. It's a commandment. And obviously not everybody's called to Hollywood, but everyone can pray for Hollywood and pray for, you know, Christian filmmakers and actors and actresses to come in and scripts, godly scripts, not, not corny scripts. You know I mean? I love Christian movies, but some of them are a little corny corny, right? We want like good, true story, funny no. scripts, things that we can play in the movie theater and they would have no idea, you know, that it's, 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 it's a Christian corny film, but they're hit by the truth and the love of Jesus in the film. You know, we're not going to hide him, right? It's not going to be a secular film by Christian filmmakers. It's going to be a Christian film with real life stories in there. And so I'm grateful to see, you know, Jesus revolution on, on the, on, on the, in this, in the movie theaters. And I pray that there'll be more movies like that more truth in, in there. And also to show the spiritual realm, you know, that's something that we talk about all the time. We don't have enough movies showing the spiritual realm. And a lot of times too, and there's sometimes I've seen with Christian films where it, it's a great story. It's a great movie. And, you know, you see people that are, 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 are in bondage. And, but at the end of the story, a lot of times they don't get delivered. You know, they, sometimes you you walk in the same way you walk out. You want to come out of a real film moved, at least deliver, at least receive Jesus, you know? So there are so many ways we can do Christian films in such a good, godly, real way and lead to deliverance and lead to truth in such a way and show the spiritual realm. So we're excited about that because that's what the Lord showed. He said, well, there's going to be Christian films and Christians are going to win awards, best actress, best film, best picture. And you're thinking how in the world? I mean, look at the end of the day, they, you know, my mental, my brain is like, oh, they can have it. I don't really care. But God said, no, I care. 
I care. That's my place. It's going to be holy word, right? It's going to be his place, his hub. And people think it's impossible. It's possible. Not by man, not by power, not by might, not by power, but by his Holy Spirit. And it's happening now because people are, I'm telling you, are desperate to see the truth. They're desperate to see good. They're desperate. And we have such debauchery on TVs and no one can take their kids to movies anymore. Well, you think about like for, for 80 plus years, you know, uh, Hollywood is just subtly put stuff in. And, you know, I think it, it's so true. Like if, if on Sunday at church, um, I said, hey, we're going to have this performance today. And then all of a sudden, this man and woman, not married, just on a couch, just started undressing and just having sex right there on the stage. People be flipping out. Yeah. If all of a sudden they just started just putting out all kinds of vulgarity, people be flipping out. And yet, how often do we tune into that kind of stuff in our living room because it's on TV and we the devil has caused us to grow cold and accustomed to seeing filth and it's desensitized us from from what true uh, holy living should look like and that's why it's so important you know to to put out good films and media has such a powerful impact and i believe this is how we're going to reach the world i mean it's amazing in my own life how god has uh, brought me into this place and now uh, you know the the media worlds where i'm living at full time that's where our ministry is because it has such a an impact on people uh, one of the movies that we did recently uh, was a true story called Pardon by Grace. And it's the story of Scott Highbarger, who was arrested 35 times and he was constantly in and out of prison. And I think the thing I like about the story and why it's resonated with people so much, because sometimes in the faith based movie, um, you know, they pray one prayer and everything's perfect. And that's not always the case. Now, God is perfect, but but uh, one one prayer doesn't necessarily mean that we'll never have problems again. What I love about Scott's story is it was a struggle for a while, but he kept just doing his best to walk with God and God showed up in an amazing way. And now Scott has one of the most amazing ministries and we're going to go through ups and downs in life. I mean, that's the reality. Um, and God, God promised he would never leave us. He's not going to forsake us, but he didn't say that life would be perfect. Yeah. And so there comes a point where we've got to learn to walk by faith. The Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please them. And the reason I'm so encouraged today, because in 2023, man, our country's a mess. Our politics are a mess. Uh, a lot of people are living messed up lives. But the reason I'm so encouraged today is because God's still on the throne. Amen. And he has <laughs> all the power that's needed. And he's not caught off guard. It's not like God's sitting up there going, wow, I didn't know there was going to be a 2023 no, he knows what's going on, and his his grace is sufficient. His power is still available, and uh, man, we have the opportunity to to see the best days of serving God right now in front of us. And I'm so excited that people are trying to take back the airwaves, trying to take back uh, Hollywood, trying to take back media, because that's how we're going to influence this next generation. We're going to do it through the power of media. But we've got to have the right kind of media. And I'm excited to hear what you all are doing. It, it, it thrills me to know that there are people not only praying for Hollywood, but trying to infiltrate and say, you know what, we've got to take it back. Yeah. And, you know, like even with YouTube, you know, I have uh, I got saved when it, what led to me finding salvation through Jesus was through YouTube. You know, I saw a YouTube video. And so I have a show on YouTube where I talk about, you know, Christian content and Old Testament. New Testament. We, we have a show, Dear Anna and Ruth, on YouTube on Fridays. And it's been wonderful, but I have so many people that always say, why are you on YouTube? Get off that place. You know, go on rumble. Look, I understand what you're saying that, um, you know, just go on rumble, get in your little, little tiny eco chamber. But the thing is, is that you have to reach the world. You know, I don't care if they've banned me on YouTube. They've done it before. And they, it's, I'm, a, I'm like a little cockroach. They can't kill me. I make a new channel. They take me off. I make a new channel. Why? Because even if I reach one soul, it's worth it. It's worth it because I got saved through YouTube. I, and I remember when TikTok came out and I said, I will never make a TikTok. And I remember the Lord telling me make a TikTok. And I said, Lord, and I, it was confirmed by this, you know, young, um, you know, young 16 year old was helping with social media a little bit. He said, I feel like you're supposed to make a TikTok. I go, yeah, that's what the Lord said this morning, literally. So we made a TikTok. Well, what do I put on there? Godly content, paces from our show, the word, Bible studies. These kids are going, looking through these things all day long, you know, on their phone. Why not have some godly content, even if it's a little bit of encouragement, even if it's a word, even if it's, the Bible says it's like a seed, right? It plants in their heart and the Lord, you know, someone waters it and God brings the increase. So it's our job to take back 
social media. And then the problem, the reason why we have such a big problem is that we've we've left it, right? We've left the school boards. We've left the city councils. We've left politics. Christians shouldn't be in politics. That's why we have this mess right now. And that's why we have to go back and take it back, right? Joshua, wherever our foot will tread, it's ours, right? We, we take authority over it in Jesus' name. So yeah, what about you? No, I, I totally agree. And we, this was something we, we talk about a lot because that was kind of the sentiment, like, you know, don't go into politics. That's no place for Christians. Don't go into, you know, filmmaking. That's no place for Christians. And now we see the results of that. Uh, one of the movies I, I got to be a part of and, and have a lead role in, uh, the executive producer, he called me and he said, man, our film got pirated on YouTube. And, uh, and I said, okay. And this had come out, uh, I think it came out theatrically and it was on streaming platforms. And, uh, and I said, are you guys getting it worked out? Are you going to take it down? He goes, no, the reason I was calling is because we started reading all the comments and somebody pirated it over, I don't know where it was, the Middle East or somewhere. They started reading all these comments of people saying, I watched this movie and it changed my life. I gave my life to the Lord and all that. And if our if our stuff is only on, quote unquote, Christian platforms, yes. who's going to reach? Amen. If we're only out to try to, you know, encourage the brethren, and there's nothing wrong with encouraging each other. We need that. Mm -hmm. But if that's the only reason we're creating media, we're missing a great opportunity because he tells us to go out into highways and hedges and compel them. How do we compel them? By sharing the truth. Listen, the greatest thing that ever happened to me was the day I gave my life to Christ. Even though I was raised in a preacher's home. I mean, I was in church nine months before I was born. I was born the week of a uh, conference my grandfather had, even though I was raised in church in my life, that didn't matter. Nothing changed my life until I gave my life to the Lord and truly made him Lord of my life. And that's what we need to let people know that there is hope. And it's not in money. It's not in fame. It's not in having a nice house. It's not in having a car that runs. The hope that we have comes in Jesus Christ, because no matter what we're going through, if we know him, we have great peace and comfort. And it, it just trumps everything else in life when you have that peace of walking with him daily. Yes, ex exactly. I, I mean, I never thought I will be happy all the time. You know? <laughs> I mean, especially in the seven times party furnish. I mean, the Bible is so real. And just I, I was telling Anna, I said, she won't be here. I mean, I don't have anything to offer her but Jesus. I have friends and senators and they are celebrities and they know I'm a pastor. You know, and it's like, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. At the same time, they say, you're not religious. I said, yeah, because that's a Pharisee spirit. I said, no one gets saved from there. I said, only by God's grace. See, when, when you realize only God's grace, we are who we are, First Corinthians 15, 10, then you realize, wow, I have nothing, you know, good inside of me, you know. So so the Lord continually, to when we die to our flesh, before I have to die for my own soul's sake. And then I, I continue to give up. Uh, you know, my life and everything else, even our home, to adopt people that are murderers, that are prostitutes, that are homeless, you know. They say, are you crazy? They say, why are you going to do it? Well, because discipleship really is a 24-7. Mm -hmm. You know, I think- Elisha and Elisha. Yeah. yeah. Followed her, followed her, Elisha around. <laughs> I mean, we talk over the phone practically every day when she's in Florida, but when she comes here, it's a 24-7. Mm -hmm. I said, daughter, even the texting, you know, how glory to glory before it's like, just blurt it out. But no, Proverbs 18 to 21 said this power when we text, when we email, when we say anything, even gestures, even doing rolling all your eyes a little bit. <gasps> I, yeah. So I'm saying it's like people think that Christianity is boring. Yeah. You know, it's like, ha, huh? you know, so exactly us. I used to ourselves. think that until I got saved. <laughs> <laughs> it's way more fun with Jesus. No, the Christian, the Christian life. Look, if I, I love to have fun, if, if you couldn't have fun being a Christian, I, I, yeah. I wouldn't be in it. I mean, and it is truly wonderful. By the way, I love the passion that uh, that you have and the energy. And I think you said your age. I wouldn't have said it, but you said it. I and I'm oh, very impressed by that. <laughs> and, and the energy that you have is phenomenal. And, you know, I can tell that the Lord has given you a, a spirit of joy and just you know, giving you a spirit of uh, being an encouragement to others. And, and there's something about um, there's something about this day and time in which we live where we need a lot of, of Barnabas, a Barnabas spirit, just that spirit of encouragement yeah. uh, and just encouraging one another. Mm -hmm. I, I spoke about this the other day. You mentioned Elijah and Elisha in, in Second Kings chapter number two. 
Um, this is the the chapter where he's going away and and he says, stay here while I go over here. And he goes, I'm going with you. And he says, stay here. And then there's 50 sons of the prophets who are like, don't you know your master's going to die today? And, and finally, he says, what do you want? I want a double portion. He said, if you're with me. But if you go back to verse number seven, the Bible says that 50 uh, men of the son of prophets stood and watched from afar, viewed from afar off. Come on. And I think about those 50 that could have had it. They could have had the same yes. thing that Elisha had, but he chose mm -hmm. They chose not to go there. They chose not to follow. Every step that he made was, was a critical step. When he went to Gilgal, it was a step of decision. When he took the next step, it was a step of devotion. They went to Jericho. It was a step of just saying that I'm going to go wherever God wants. When they crossed Jordan, it was a step of death in his life to say, no matter what, I want everything God has for me. And I think there's a lot of people that buy into this lie that you know, I wish I could be as good of a Christian as that person is. I wish I could love Jesus like you two ladies love Jesus. I wish I could pray like this one. Listen, God is no respecter of persons, and you can be as close to God as you want to be. Matter of fact, he says, if you'll draw nigh to him, he'll draw nigh to you. He wants to have such a close personal relationship with you. He's waiting on you because God is never going to force you to walk with him. It's a decision you have to make daily. And Paul said, I have to die daily to my flesh. Uh, and I know you experience there. There are things that from the flesh, there are things that were waved in front of you that were waved. And, and when you live that lifestyle, that it's appealing to the flesh. And that's why we've got to learn to walk uh, by the spirit and not by the flesh, because the flesh will direct us wrong every time. The, these things are temporarily yeah. uh, enjoyment there. There is pleasure. The Bible says in sin for a season, but we're going to reap what we sow. And that's why we have to learn to walk by the Spirit and say, God, would you guide me every step of the way? And we realize that what we're doing for the Lord, our labor is not in vain in Him. And so it's so important that we walk with Him. Now, I, I want to know a little bit more, and, and both of you can answer this, but right now, first off, how can our listeners, how can they pray for you? And what's some of the things that, that you're working on right now uh, as we uh, kind of are nearing the latter part of 2023? Well, it's like she mentioned about the spiritual realm. There's everybody, most in Hollywood, are so good in, in really portraying the dark side. Mm. I said, so what about the God side? See, there's always a battle. We all know that, you know. But at the same token, I mean, at the end of that uh, film, they're all like engrossed with the supernatural demonic stuff. They're not in awe of the God that who created even Lucifer, you know. So we said, we're going to show this. Everything that the Lord has shown us for me for 30 years, I've seen the supernatural. It's real. I said, so we can make a film of everything that we know how now I said, God, I know that I don't want to have a cheesy uh, film. But mm -hmm. so God connected us with people like really know how to do um like special based, effects uh, yeah special mm -hmm. effects and all this so i said god i know that because when we were having our seven day tv show we don't really have a budget but we have god that is so creative yeah and he's got an unlimited budget amen he owns a yeah. on a thousand hills <laughs> that's right and so anyway so the dark side and the good side the god side we have to show that without being religious so at the end of the, the story it has to be god winning 100%, you know, it's not like maybe God is good, strong and powerful. Mm -mm. Our God is so powerful. That's it, the conclusion of the matter. And just like she said, they have to get saved. And then number two is like, if we, we, we can put that reality show because we're actually being filmed by God. Yeah, I remember when we were talking about Survivor and she said, you know, daughter, we're actually all in a reality show 24 seven. God's camera in heaven is always watching us. It's, it's being filmed. And actually the, the word says it's already written down. Amen. Yes. So everything is being highlighted in heaven. Our family sees it. Jesus sees it. The angels see it. nothing is hidden. Amen. In, in heaven. And the Lord says he's going to expose everything. So even our hearts are our thoughts. Yes. And so, so yeah, we're, we're all in 24 seven, 366 days a year reality show. So if you don't want to be on the show survivor, you're on it right now. Amen. You don't have to survive. We can be thriving. Cause some, you know, some Christians are just, they're just trugging along to survive and they're trying to make it. They're like, Oh, I don't know if I can take it anymore. We should be thriving, right? The yeah. Bible says, hallelujah. It says that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Romans eight thirty seven, I think. So we are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. So the victory is already ours. Jesus won it on the cross 2000 years ago. It is ours. You proclaim it over your life. You proclaim it over your children. And we're going to proclaim it over this nation and the world because God is taking his things back. Amen. Hollywood was supposed to be a place of glory, a place of uh, 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 exemplifying the family and and, and God and godly relationships. And it's been co-opted. The devil always co-opts and he always uh, disfigures God's image, God's beauty. And so for those that are tired of being in, you know, the image of the devil, you know, you want to be the image of God. I mean, really it's through the word in the passion. Where does it come from? Because like you were saying, people always say, oh, we want to be like you. We want to have passion like you. We want to have faith like you. Actually, her sister said that to her. Her sister's a pastor. She said, you know, God, how come my sister has so much more faith than I don't? Give me gift of faith like my sister. And the Lord told her, I did give it to you. She's using it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you're not, I gave it to both of you. You're, she's using it. You're not. So this is the kind of, you know, this is like the line in the sand right now. There is no in between. Mm-hmm. There is no standing on the sidelines. Just, you know, okay. You know, go to church once a week. No, you, it's a 24 seven, 366. God is watching you. And again, I'm not trying to be religious. We're not yeah. trying to be religious, but it's possible to live in this joy and such a place of peace. I'm addicted to God's peace. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, I was again like surviving, barely making it, but now we're thriving. Amen. A line of the sand, good and evil. You know, a line of the sand of your children, line of the sand for this country. And and I'm so thankful. You, you're you're active, Pastor Pastor Ben. I mean, I always say like you're you're either you're either just a patriot or you're an active patriot. You're either an anti-communist or you're an active anti-communist. You're a Christian and you can be an activated Christian. Amen. And lead so many to Jesus. And it only takes one. The Bible had one: Esther, Moses, Abraham, right? Deborah. He one takes one to save an entire nation. And all we have to do, like Isaiah says, here, God, here I am, Lord, use me. So what's kind of down the pipeline for us? We're, we're working on scripts. I'm here actually, you know, praying in the Lord. Um, she used to have a seven day TV show and it's so amazing because the Lord would download and not, I don't like to say download, but the Lord revealed to her what the script is. And she would write it down. She'd have every per- person of the church have, have a line, right? And she would come and give the scripts to these, these mem- uh, congregation and the congregation would say, Pastor Ruth, I said this 20 years ago. I said this yesterday to my husband. I, you know, the Lord knows. So it was so amazing. So we're, we're back here writing scripts, just like the Lord showed in dreams. We're, we're working on, uh, you know, some ideas, some God ideas. So pray for us in, in that sense that God just reveal more and God's will be done because the Lord said, not just one movie, you're 30 movies a year. And it's like, yeah. it's Lord, you know, but, but, you know, by God's grace, all things are possible. Amen. Absolutely. And you know, I love it, but when people are getting discouraged, they're down. I'm talking about believers. All you got to do is go to the back of the book and remember when we read it, we win. We're on God's side. We're on the winning side. So lift your head up, be encouraged and be emboldened in your faith. Uh, unfortunately, the, the the world has caused us to, to be quiet, to be shy. There's a, a small minority of people who would love to silence every believer and they've done a good job of that. And we, we cower in fear from speaking the truth and well, I, you know, yeah, we, we don't want to be religious, but we do want to be righteous. God's yes. called us to be holy and we want to stand for truth. And we just need to proclaim thus saith the Lord. I, I know sometimes uh, uh, pastors have a tough time, you know, when they're maybe being interviewed on live TV and the question is, is asked, is Jesus the only way to heaven? And they have a tough time answering that. Here, here's what I learned a long time ago. If I just say what God says, I don't have to apologize for it. God said it. So don't get mad at me. God said it. I believe God. And so this is what God says. God says through his scripture. That's right. God says through scripture that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but through him. So take it up with God. If you don't like that he only gave one way to get there, that's he said it. I didn't. But thank you, ladies, for what you're doing for, for your faith and I think we need more people to recognize that we've got to take back the airways. We've got to take back uh, Hollywood. We've got to take back all the things that we've given ground up over all these uh, all these years. We've allowed the devil just to continue to take this ground. We've got to take it back. And I want to say thank you all for doing that. Oh, it's an honor. Oh, Jesus. It's the oh, honor yeah. of our life. And, and it's all glory to God. So thank you for having us, Pastor Ben. You too. Thank you for everything you're doing. And we give God all the glory. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Hey guys, thank you so much for being here. Wow, man, what a great show we had. Uh, I really enjoyed 
hearing from two ladies that came from other countries here to America that have understood what it means to be free and the responsibility we have living in this great country with all that God has given us to take our resources and use them for Him to defend our faith, our family, and our freedoms. And so I really appreciate that. And I want to encourage you today. You may be saying, you know, what can I do to really have an impact on society? Or what can I do? Maybe you're like, I'd love to be an actor, an actress. I'd love to write scripts. I would love to get involved in media. I just don't know how. Because the fear is if you're going to do that, most of the time you have to go through Hollywood or New York, and you're going to be subject to liberal ideas and liberal ideology. You say, I don't really want to go that route, so what do I do? Well, first off, one of the things that's so awesome about the day and time in which we live is everybody can get involved in media. With this thing called YouTube, you can start your own channel, uh, Facebook Live, and on and on I could go. Maybe just start with sharing things that you're passionate about, putting some things together. You can also go online and you can find all kinds of resources to learn how to act, to learn how to audition, to learn where to start. You can go to those resources. You can also go to our website, GrahamFamilyFilms.com. You can submit your information and we'll start sending you emails, letting you know about the latest uh, films that's coming out, the latest projects that you can be a part of, and also sending out some tutorials and things that can help you if you're trying to get into that industry. So go to GrahamFamilyFilms.com and sign up, subscribe, and you'll get all those newsletters and emails about that. But let me just encourage you, keep praying. Listen, keep hope. Don't forget that everything is going to be okay because God is in control. We can trust Him. And let's be bold in our faith. Let's speak the truth no matter what others tell us, and let's let them know that serving God is the greatest life that you can live. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.